hands of being um, daffy versus ballistic. Um, he could just do that manually um, if he wanted. Or I could try to give it to him in, in one uh, one unified tape. Hello, Craig, John. Good evening. Hello. Good morning to you. Can you guys hear me? I can hear you, John. All right, good. Oh, hang on. I got to rejoin. I'll be right um, It's not for hard, hard for us to say, well, we know from, from Daffy's list, we think we know which attributes we can find. Hey, Lucas, can you still hear me? Yes, I can hear you. All right.
All right, let's just give everybody another minute here to, to join. Hi, John. Sorry, I was on. I had you uh, muted and my speaker off for a minute while I was finishing up my other call. Sorry about that. Uh, no worries. So it looks like we're pretty, pretty thin today. Got six people. Hey, the important ones are here. That's true. <laughs> Seen it more efficient. I mean, yes. Hey, Craig, I don't know if I can share. Am I? Uh... Well, John, I, I was the, I added you as a host. I noticed you weren't when I looked at you. I, so I added you as a host. So, so you should have full access to everything in the meeting. Oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah, there we go. All right. Well, let's let's go ahead and get started. Um, you know, so this is the the agenda I have. Um, you know, first off, um, do, we don't have anybody from OCP, do we? That can talk about any administrative items. No. Okay. So I thought um, we give a little update on the OCP Global Summit, um, and then maybe Lucas, if you or Samuli had anything that you wanted to share about the base specifications, I'll talk a little bit about kind of wiki updates. And uh, that was a good question about uh, where are the recordings going. So uh, that's I think part of part of that. Um, then I, you know, I added this topic that we just talked about, about, you know, somebody from OCP Edge giving an intro to Starling X. Um, are there any other topics anybody would like to add? Anything? And yeah, I was hoping to have uh, Jean-Paul Smith talk from Rapid Space, but he had a conflict today. So he promised me he's a definite for December. So we will have him in December. Um, in terms of the Global Summit, um, I thought the turnout was fantastic. I think people have been telling me it was been the largest one that they've had so far. Um, there were, there were a couple of presentations that were standing room only and flowing out the door, which I thought was pretty amazing. Um, so, uh, you know, it was quite expansive, and uh, I think there was a lot of interest. And the, the vendor space was just packed the whole time. So, like, you know, normally you'd see, like, oftentimes you go to these things and, and you know, people are totally consumed by the presentations. But I think uh, the, the, the whole vendor space floor part was very well attended um you know and basically people making good contacts and and seeing different things that are going on uh does anybody have any questions on summit that i can maybe answer
Okay, if that, um, do we have anything to share in terms of being able to kind of get these base specifications published? Are we ready to, to share anything yet there? Lucas? Uh, no, John, uh, we actually still have going through some internal legal review and uh, before this um, license agreements are signed. So basically those are on the pipeline to be submitted um, late, hopefully later this month. Okay. Very good. So that uh, we will really cross that off the uh, the to do list finally, which uh, would be fantastic. Um, in terms of OCP Edge intro, well, let me let me talk a little bit about the wiki updates first. So, um, I can share here. So, what uh, this is the wiki. And I think, you know, Lucas, you were asking before, there were updates to these past recordings. But we have to, I think, kind of figure out where this is going now with this Zoom. So I guess I can reach out to somebody at OCP and find out where that's going. Um, and then I was mentioning earlier, so I updated, updated the section here for the monthly virtual team meeting content. And that's where I've shared uh, the Starling X materials that uh, Adoko had, had presented in October. Um, and then also here, there are the videos have been posted now for all of the Global Summit sessions. And they're available on YouTube. And so I basically posted down here at the bottom the playlist that's specific to what was given at the edge during the edge kind of sub Etelco Edge subgroup content. So that's the playlist there. The The turnout we had, I think, was was quite good. I would say we had, uh, I'd say, easily over 100 people for our, our Edge session was the morning portion, um, basically going from, I think, around 8 o'clock to, like, around noon, 1 o'clock. Um, and we had, you know, I'd say... The room it had over 100 people in it, so I think yeah, we had some pretty good turnout. So it was, I think I think the event went really well and uh, definitely got a lot of interest. Um, I got to mingle and meet with a lot of the different uh, people that are involved in some of the other groups. And uh, one of the things that they're looking at trying to do is build um, some more connections across things that are happening across OCP and get a little more synergy going so um yeah i was trying to meet with some of the other groups things that are looking at like the liquid cooling you know since that's kind of an interest to us and whatnot so you know overall i thought it was a very good session and um you know i'm looking forward to uh the next one you know as we can think the, the regional ones come up and then we'll, we'll do another global one um and then going back to the agenda, so um, Adilko, maybe you could kind of talk about what what would you be looking for for somebody to come and present, just like a, an overview of OCP or the, this Edge project in in particular. What um, would it would uh, something kind of interest something is there? My thinking was to yeah. have. Uh, yeah similar presentation than what I was uh, doing for starting X here, just kind of an OCP edge overview and just to trigger some more of the uh, conversations in terms of how the two groups and communities uh, will be able to break fish items out ideas and like, like would, would they be interested Yep. Go ahead. Would they be interested in, in sort of this base specification that we're working on? Is that you know is that going to be too deep of a level? Do, you know, is it higher higher level than that? Um, I think uh, when it comes to interface specifications, I, I think probably the interest is, is on the on the layer where the hardware and software infrastructure connect. 
Um, so anything that, that is interesting from hardware management point of view um, in an environment, either locally or remotely, I think that that would be a, an area of interest for both communities and then also an area for, for collaboration. Like the community is working on, you know, um, adding support for hardware accelerators, such as networking service cards, ARM support uh, is an ongoing activity as well for different hardware architectures. Um, so anything along those lines that would affect, you know, how the infrastructure is managed, if that is helpful information or point. Um, Thoughts. So I think I think when when you were presenting, folks started talking about potentially a profile um somebody can refresh my memory. Craig, do you remember exactly what yeah, we, that we was? We're looking at uh, red redfish profiles for the hardware. Yeah, that's, that's and, how, and how that exactly. could be integrated. Yeah. Yeah. I think that it would be great to, to talk about a little bit about OCP and then what OCP Edge within the community is, is specifically about, what the activities are, scope, mission, um, and then um, any further um, information that would that would point towards potential areas of, of collaboration, like yeah, the uh, the Redfish profile is a is a prime example for that. I think there were also questions about Ansible and and those kind of things and how the infrastructure is deployed and managed. What about Eldico? Uh, sort of a general intro of why from my point of view, why I saw synergy between Starling X and Open Edge, and then someone else can do, okay, here's Open Edge. Yeah, I think that would be, that would be, that would be perfect. Just as a, you know, why, why are we all here kind of conversation? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I did, I did tell the Starling X community about the, um, about my presentation on, on this OCP Edge call. And then obviously the, the follow-up question is like, oh, how can you learn more about OCP Edge? And it would be great to have the, the vice versa, like having people from OCP Edge on the starting X call as well, just to kind of close the loop. And Andy, if you can if you, if you can kind of provide the glue in terms of where these uh, where these projects uh, connect, like in your use case, I think that would be pretty great. It would yeah, it would be yeah, it would be quite good to do sort of a real world intro and uh, you know an example of how things could work, and then let let the more specialist people take it from there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, I I do have a question regarding uh, Starlink X. Um, I I listened to the presentation. Uh, I'm not quite sure. So, uh, the deployment of it. Uh, I, I get that. Uh, the development of the the tool, uh, it's it's on the cloud on the the Starling platform. Uh, but as far as the deployment, so what, what, once the development is done, do do we get an output like file uh, that contains the uh, solution and and take that and load it to the edge uh, on the server so that can serve the um, the needs on on the edge? Is that how how this works? So uh, the community has uh, the starting as community uh, working on um, maintaining and enhancing a build system, and you can build ISO images uh, to deploy the platform. And um, there are also uh, container images available. Uh, all the infrastructure services are containerized within the starting as platform. So to do the user need to bring the whole uh, Starling X platform to the Edge server, or just bring that the output file and load it in a container uh, that's already exists on on the Edge? So uh, the deployment depends on uh, what kind of configuration you would like to have for the Edge site, like how many servers you have, and and what footprint 
uh, you need to manage there. Uh, you The starting X deployment is a distributed infrastructure. So you usually have a, a central component and then you can either have an ISO image locally or you can also uh, deploy sites remotely through the network. Okay, okay. So uh, if, if I chose the, the second way, like you said, remotely, so the application has to point to the Starling X um, uh, output file or solution uh, on 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 the cloud, and then execute the um, uh, the solution remotely. Is, is that how how this work? Uh, Starling X itself is the cloud. I'm not sure I fully understand your question. Okay, can I jump jump in? Um, if if this helps, perhaps think of Starling X as private distributed cloud. So you can deploy the ISOs at your edge sites and have container environment at the edge, which is managed from the center. You can deploy OpenStack in the core and have you know, full VM functionality in there. And you can have different kinds of edge sites, different sizes. Um, so it kind of gives you the, the flexibility to build your own private distributed cloud. Thanks for the slide. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, the, yeah, go ahead. Architectures the next. The previous, probably the previous one slide. Sorry, I go ahead. No, I actually barely hear you. Your uh, your audios uh, somehow uh, fluctuate a lot. Uh, I I can catch it bits and pieces, but not the whole thing. I I don't know if other people has the same same issue like me. Yeah, it's usually me with audio problems. But <laughs> I can grab a headset. Just give me a second. You find where I put it. But did what Andy say uh, clarify your, your question, Eric, or is it still unclear? Uh, if you can uh, go through it one more time, I appreciate that. I mean, I, I don't want to take a whole lot of other people's time, but uh, just briefly, maybe maybe it will help, thanks. So what what Andy was uh, was describing? Uh -huh. uh, can you hear me any better? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Good. Good. Now. Yeah. <laughs> Thank okay. you. I will speak louder. So uh, what Andy was describing is that Starling X is a distributed cloud platform. Okay. Uh, you can you can deploy it as a private cloud, and that means that the Starling X platform, which does have uh, the Linux kernel and operating system integrated into it, it goes directly on top of the hardware, both okay. centrally as well as on the edge site. So it will provide the container platform for you if you want to deploy applications in containers. And it also deploys the infrastructure services and containers for better flexibility, flexibility and manageability. Is this helpful to yes. uh, better yes. understand? Yes. Yes, yeah, so so you can uh, deploy on on the uh, a, a a telco edge basically, right? Yeah, you deploy to bare metal, and you've got the Yocto real time. Right, right, right. Okay. And the other way to do it is it's to 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 access it from the edge uh, server directly to the to the cloud platform. Am I correct? You mean the deployment to, or? Well, to, to run the application, right? Uh, if you don't have this whole thing, the platform loaded on the local, uh, the edge container, uh, you can still run the the application by pointing it to the, to the cloud, right? Am I correct it's, about it's, it? What is, what is application in, in your context? Uh, oh, whatever problem it's trying to solve. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so, so Star Starling X is an orchestration platform rather than application itself. Okay. So, okay. Uh, uh, management of distributed and edge cloud. Elder, jump in if I get anything wrong, please. 
Um, no, I, I but think man management of, of remote cloud, or of edge sites, and of the core as well. And in the core, you might want to put OpenStack. You probably don't want to push OpenStack out to the edge because it's a bit greedy. Um, but you can have container apps at the edge and man one management layer. So one reporting layer, one set of performance stats and monitoring, one set of fault monitoring, everything else, one set of user management. Um, and all of that is managed in your own cloud environment. So Starling Act is not a, like a commercial cloud offering itself. I'm sure there were people out there who were quite happily do that. Well, there are <laughs> but, already. Um, it is, yeah, there, yeah. There, is, there is commercial offerings, uh, at least one that I know of that is already out there and running in production that is based on Starling X. But yeah, Starling X is, is software infrastructure management. So uh, Starling X does have components that do hardware management as well. So it does manage the bare metal infrastructure for you that is included in the platform. So Starling X itself is a, is a distributed cloud platform that you can deploy in one large data center if that's what you want to do, or you can deploy it in a geographically distributed environment, which is what the platform was designed for. So that's where you, you get all the advantages. If you deploy it in one large data center, then you just get a, an average cloud platform experience. But where Starting X really shines is the distributed edge infrastructure environment. And yes, Starting X is not an application. It is the, the, the cloud software itself. And that's telco yeah. plus industrial as well. Oh, no, our could interest is anything, industrial, yes. but yeah, could be yeah. whatever distributed you need, retailer even. Yeah. So, so that that kind of kind of comes to a question that's been bouncing around in my head. So, you know, Starling X was kind of designed for the edge, right? Because it it needs to work in a very constrained environment, but it does not mandate it go on the edge, right? It can run in these larger things. So, the question I had kind of bouncing in my head was, you know, is this something that we could open up to? You know, since we're a subgroup under the telco group, you know, would this be something that you know? goes beyond just you know our edge specific thing but would also be you, you know you could bring also other those other telco workloads and things that are talked about in sort of our parent organization De definitely as well yeah i mean starting so like, is currently running in production at verizon vodafone um kddi t systems for 5g and and open ran uh infrastructure um, management and orchestration. And, and Elisa, if we have any Finnish colleagues on the call. Yes, I saw yep. the article. I, I'm not sure where the deployment phase is, uh, is at right now, but I did see uh, that Elisa is doing that too. Thanks for adding that. So, so the question would be, the question would be, since we talked about, if you, can you guys see the picture I'm sharing here? Yes. So, so yeah, we're talking about this IPMI Redfish part in this mm -hmm. profile. Now, there would be one that would probably be specific to our edge community and the things that we're doing here with the edge hardware. But this may be different in the larger context of going in kind of more of these centralized type of deployments, not specifically to the edge hardware. I mean, when it comes to Starling X, both of those can be in play. So um, if there would be work in both places, I think we could start here and see how a profile would look like for the edge. Like uh, the, the Starling X community is working on um, like deployment options to uh, to only eat up one CPU core for the for the platform and management services and reserve everything else for the application. So trying to be as tiny as possible. So uh, there, there are activities that are more specific to the constraints at edge sites. Um, so in, in that sense, I think um, looking into collaboration between OCP Edge and Starling X makes sense. And uh, I don't know if it would make sense to uh, to look into the broader scope 
in parallel right away or we want to try one step with the edge group and then open it up for uh for a broader collaboration i um i'm not sure how you all are organized here and what would make most sense for for ocp the ocp activities from the well, ocp activities perspective yeah so so basically though think of the ocp you know is, ocp is hardware mm -hmm. so these are your servers network switches uh, storage devices accelerator farms accelerator cards that would plug into a server uh you know a hardware type things right so basically when we're talking about the redfish those would that would be a method of say configuring your bios so that uh you know if you wanted to have you know certain bios settings maintain when you bring up your hardware that kind of thing when you deploy the hardware initially setting of the bios the reporting of temperatures of you know the server kinds of telemetry that you would require right so that's really the profile in redfish terms is like you know hey what do you what 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 do you need to know about the hardware in order to manage it uh typically a bring up and then i think um starling x then is actually the os that would be installed on top of that base hardware, mm -hmm. right? So it's, yes. a, it's a Linux kernel. Uh, the Linux kernel's gonna, you know, it may require some BIO settings. Do you want to enable P states for uh, frequency control? Do you want to uh, install, you want to instantiate C states for allowing CPUs to sleep when they're not busy? Those kinds of things would, would probably be things that would be in this Redfish profile. You know, right to expose those items and then to get the telemetry back to monitor the health of that environment, the underlying environment. So, I think we need to, from uh, you know, at, at some point, you know, the if you're not, I mean, I know, I know you can run Starling X on on the cloud, for instance. I don't think you'd have to own infrastructure, but typically, people who are looking to deploy this would probably have. You know, a data center that would have some component, you know, Starling X running there, and then would also uh, coordinate with the edge locations, which are then, you know, creating a larger Kubernetes containerized system so that Starling X can then manage the workloads that are going to be deployed onto those uh, pieces of hardware in those edge locations and to coordinate that is that kind of the you know is that is that the way that starling x would would be configured so like if it were a you know one of the providers that you mentioned you know they typically would have you know uh, maybe several nationwide large data centers and then they would have regional data centers and then finally you get down to you know, edge locations, and then what we would call a far edge, that in in this in this uh, instance would be like maybe at a cell tower, for instance, may have a server there that would run the workloads to enable the 5G to work, for instance, uh, the VDU component that would talk to the antennas mm -hmm. at the at the site. So there there seems to be a large. Uh, area is would it be possible or is there a some kind of like a white paper or application notes on starling that starling x that maybe we could uh take into the ocp as a uh, use case to document this so that our community could understand kind of how they could use the hardware with the starling x software so we kind of have had that for other types of applications uh, and, and not applications, even the uh, infrastructure, because I think Starling X is not the application as much as the infrastructure for managing an application that would be distributed geographically. Does that kind of fit? I mean, am I, am I thinking about Starling X in the right context? I 
think so. I mean, yes, Starling X, as yes. you said, it is the it is the cloud platform itself. So it is providing the infrastructure that the applications are running on top of. Starling X's focus is managing the hardware and software infrastructure pieces and providing either a container environment or or a, or a virtual machine environment or the combination of those two to run applications in depending on what the infrastructure operator and the the users want to do so it does provide you with kubernetes it does provide you with openstack and then you can you can choose which one you you need um, when it comes to how the telcos are utilizing the platform, I currently don't have a, a very detailed case study on that. I will go back to the community and check if if we can put something together. If you can point me to any existing um, similar kind of content that you are using within OCP just to get an idea of what level of detail uh, we should try to go into, then I can work with the community pro to, uh, to provide you uh, with that information. Like I do know that starting X is running at DUs, like the distributed unit um, of a 5G deployment, but I do not know any details about how it's exactly configured, what the hardware configuration is there, I do not know. Um, so that is something that I need to work uh, with the community on to see if we can if we can put together a, a case study that that you could use. Yeah, I think I think Starling X is sort of like a wraparound, and it sort of like fills in all the things that like Kubernetes and OpenStack don't do that you sort of need in kind of this middleware layer to be able to bring your containers to bring your VMs. Right, and so part of it has this Redfish interface that we talked about, you know, defining a profile for. But like, sort of, my, my thought was, you know, what we would need for the edge would be very specific. But what you know, what would be interesting is is you know, and maybe you know, the approach is we start with the edge, but like that could be one profile. But like when we get to the you know different hardware configurations for centralized and telco other telco workloads, that profile may be different, right? So so right. Yeah, and, and so you, you, you might want things like you might want things like PCI pass through in some places and not others. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I was just so my my thinking is that if we open up the whole box and say that we are creating 15 profiles that that might be a, a large scope uh, to uh, to efficiently get done. So I was thinking that if we can identify a, a, a smaller scope item like the edge and put a profile together, then we can um, we can then build on that and so, and like so branch hang on out. So, so a Redfish profile, though, is the way that you manage hardware, right? I mean, mm -hmm. you know, you have you have here a, a one a little box that I'm looking at on the left hand side that says IPMI Redfish. So the profile that we're talking about is simply that piece. Mm -hmm. It's either you know the the infrastructure management part. That's that's all the profile is. It doesn't define like how an application works. It's not that kind of a profile. It's simply hardware. I profile. understand. Okay. I do understand that. And Starling X does manage hardware. So there might already be profiles defined yes, for I... Starling X, but I, I'm not working on the hardware profile. So this conversation would be amazing on the Starling X community call where we have yes. people who are actually working on it. <laughs> Right. Well, I think when 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 you know when thinking about OCP and and the infrastructure management of the OCP hardware, the Redfish is the way that the hardware is managed. All all of OCP is required to have a profile, which you know basically you know if it's a server or it's a storage device, they have different 
items that you need to configure from a hardware standpoint. And that's what the profile is. So I would imagine that the open edge, uh, so open edge is a hardware platform that the, this group uh, has you know, specified and, and maintains. And so it has a Redfish profile for managing that hardware that's defined. And the question would be, I think from a Redfish standpoint is, is that profile sufficiently defined for uh, Starling X to take advantage of? And, and I would suspect that it probably does, right? And I, I put into the chat a, uh, an open edge use case that's on the cloud ran to give you maybe a, some idea of how OCP gear is, is, you know, used and configured. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and, I just opened in, it. In terms of an edge, in terms of an edge application, that would be cloud ran, right? Yeah. Um, I'm I'm happy to point the the starting X community to uh, to uh, to this um, white sure. paper or or document yeah, yeah white paper, um, and I think that like if again someone from from OCP Edge could uh, just talk about your activities like what OCP Edge is your scope and maybe talk a bit more about the the profile that you have. For, for open edge for redfish that could be a good connection point and help the starting X community also understand what your scope and your activities are and where the connection and integration points are. Yeah, I, I think if we have a concrete use case, uh, that will go a long way and uh, help generate a lot more interest. But like, like what we, what the profile that, you know, going back to what Kirk was saying, it's specific, you know, there's specific hardware we have in the edge environment. So it would be you starting out with like a subset and of, you know, what specific hardware is so there. So actually, right. because because the open edge, is, so it's a it's a you know essentially a, ch a chassis that has power supply and a rack management controller, and then it has sleds that are computer servers that are that are plugged into that chassis. And the Redfish profile is actually the Redfish profile for servers. It's not like there's a special Redfish profile for Edge. It's the same exactly. Redfish profile that's used for any of the OCP servers, whether you choose to use a sled from, say, the Open Edge, mm -hmm. or if you're using a 1U, you know, like we call a pizza box server that's in the in the server group, right? So there's there's many different types of servers and form factors in OCP in general that not necessarily everyone is going to use an open edge server. Um, you know, people like to use other computers mm -hmm. or whatever, but the, you know, the server profile is the same server profile that would be used in any OCP server, whether it's an open edge chassis sled or whether it's one of the other form factors that's mm -hmm. uh, maintained by the server group. Right. Okay. So, yeah, I don't think, I think the, the main thing is like, you know, people who are deploying Starling X today, they install that on some infrastructure, hardware infrastructure, not the software infrastructure, right? But the yes, hardware yes. infrastructure, the switches, the, the computers that make up, you know, their, their infrastructure. They have some in the edge, they have some in data centers that are regional or, you know, Maybe where, in this case, you know, you said like a DU is deployed on an edge box and the CU may be deployed, say, in a, in a more centralized regional fashion than the DUs. And so sometimes because that's a, a larger data center type environment, they use a different uh, server 
type of server even, you know, maybe a dual socket server versus a single socket that's used like on the, on the edge uh, in order to run the, the CU workload. But it would still run Starling X to coordinate those applications that are running in each of those locations. And we're not, we, we want to understand what the applications is to make sure that our hardware is suitable for the use case, which then in, in our terms, typically comes down to things like what's the operating temperature that, uh, you know, the uh, ambient temperature. So like if you have a cell site, there's not gonna be a large air conditioning unit, that kind of thing. So they're typically want it to run at a hotter temperature than you would expect the, the equipment, a server to run in say the, the more central data centers where you have larger cooling systems and can, you know, those kinds of things, right? Or sometimes there are, people want to talk about say the form factor. Oh, it needs to be, you know, 420 millimeters deep, which is a kind of a narrow space because sometimes you're constrained in space uh, requirements at edge sites. Not, you know, and this is, kind of a telco type edge environment. Uh, some retail environments, for instance, or uh, some of the railway applications or ship side, they have a little bit different form factor, but then they're, they're also concerned about like vibration, is it seismic rated, those kinds of things. And so uh, one of the things that would be interesting from the Starling X community would be, what are those types of hardware issues and requirements that they have, do they require NEBS compliance, for instance, for those boxes that run on the edge? Do they also require those for in the regional data center? Can they relax some of the NEBS requirements or are they very strict about it, right? Those are the kinds of things that, that we're most interested in because like I said, we tend to, we deal more in the hardware but we do definitely want to understand and make sure that our hardware is usable by other uh, environments. Yeah, you know, whether it's open, open stack, whether it's a Kubernetes, you know, whether it's Windows. I mean, you know, we want to make sure VMware that that that, that those environments can run on the hardware. So understanding what those requirements are from that level. Is, is somewhat uh, of most interest to us, right? I mean, we're interested in applications and how they behave and, and all of that as well. I mean, I think everyone here is, is, has a much broader interest in, you know, computing topics in general and operating environments. But OCP is, is concerned with, you know, making open source hardware at the end of the day. That's so, a great so, summary. So Craig, I, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, John. Yeah, no, so I was gonna say, yeah, yeah, so Craig, so, you know, with what you said, you know, if we start, yeah, I'm trying to understand, like, you know, is this something that we should do from the edge thing or, or like, is this something we engage at a higher level in OCP because it would, you know, like you said, you know, our deployment would be, you know, ran and it's just maybe part of it goes on in the edge. There's other parts of it go somewhere else. You know this this profile well, piece. You know, you so, know, it's really kind of a bigger a bigger thing than just kind of what we're doing on the edge side. Well, so I, so I think in in general, what we what we are experiencing in our community is that we were very focused on uh, the telco edge and a very specific piece of hardware for use by providers of. Uh, basically cellular communications. And that was the focus of the group. However, as the edge has become more important in a, in a larger sense, then this community attracts people. So it, like Andy, for instance, I believe Andy came to us from telco, I mean, from uh, transportation, if, if I remember correctly. Yep. Because yep, that's of right. the the ruggedized nature of our hardware suited some of the application needs that he had from, from a hardware standpoint. His application was much different than what we were, what we were you know, addressing from a, 
um, you know, cellular telephone kind of thing, right? And so the edge group, because we attract people who are interested in the edge, we're trying to expand our range of applications to address other types of edge applications. I mentioned, you know, we have some, we've had retail, uh, transportation, both uh, railway and uh, ships. Uh, and then, you know, so we want to, we're, we're trying to find out, is there some commonality there? And can, you know, what do we need to expand to, to address our community's needs? And I, and I believe I guess, we're having. I guess more. that's. Go ahead, Andy. That's kind of a big. That's kind of a bigger question, isn't it? Is, you know, is Edge a subset of Telco, or should Edge be a thing in its own? Yeah, it's a different. It's a different question, well, obviously. Think, but. Yeah, I I agree, and that's something that that's actually in in that we've been discussing in the in the OCP and like in the steering committee, for instance. We we've, we've been talking about those kinds of things. And we, we want to make sure that the people who have edge other than telco cellular related have a place to come, even though in this case, we're talking about Starling X and the, uh, that community seems to be mostly service providers again, right? Which is, you know, that's okay. That's not a problem, but we do want to make sure that we're uh, not, exclusive of people you know what i mean we want to be we want to be as inclusive and as many things if people want to talk about edge this is the natural place for them to talk about it whether edge you know the the open edge platform maybe we start a new group that's just focused on that and we have a larger group about edge but the you know ocp is traditionally about open source hardware not you know, open source projects such as Starling X. Uh, so, yeah. but, but like I can see, you know, so in a past history, I worked with this positive train control, um, which is kind of more in Andy's and Andy's realm, where you know we had computers on board trains and and all this kind of thing, and they were communicating. You know, so you could kind of see Starling X fits, you know, perhaps his use case. I would you know, think so it, it would. it's not yeah. right. And and you know, going going back to what you were saying, right, is is the community this that we have right now is set up for a very specific thing, but like you know, we're finding that it, it has broader applicational uses, right? In like you said, retail and other things. So the question is, is you know, for this redfish profile, is this something that that the current structure we have is this something that we we that would make sense that we would give specifically for the like the open edge or is this something that we need to open up to the larger OCP community? Well, I mean, that I would John, make... you know, normally John uh, Leong is on the call and he would jump in now and start talking about you know the hardware management group who basically you know does most of the redfish work and. You know, right, right. It's responsible for having, you know, all of the groups have redfish profiles for their pieces of hardware and those kinds of things. Right. Right. So, so, so I'm like, not, I'm not really the be... person to, to answer that other than, you know, our, our profile is kind of inherited from the telco profile because in telco, there were OCP sleds that were used for, you know, other telco workloads not specific to the to the edge or the you know and really far edge because this this group is typically uh what was started and our scope is about that server chassis and sleds that are used in the far edge deployments primarily for mobile use again right mobile service providers use this hardware um i think maybe just to, to add how i how i got here might might help yes. um yes. so i actually started because european and, U and u.s rail standards are, are quite different as you probably all know um we are effectively going to have to deploy a private mobile network along the railway infrastructure 
And that is actually what brought me looking at Open Edge in the first place. The the small cell or the, the cellular use cases, um, DU, CU, all of those kind of options. And then it kind of grew into, hang on, can we use the same kind of hardware for doing the other applications that we need in places like stations or like remote equipment, you know, sensor, sensor data aggregation, all those kind of things. Purely because, you know, economies of scale of using the same equipment just makes sense. Right. Yeah. We can't yeah, be the yeah. only. Be, we can't be the only industry in that position. <laughs> no, no. I mean, that, and that's kind of what we're seeing, right? Is is this edge is is really kind of tackling this like idea of small footprint and and you know uh, high high reliability and you know, all this other kinds of stuff, right? right. It, it read the ruggedness aspect, right? So, so it's applicable to a whole bunch of things outside of you know. You know so you sort of need like this telco hardening in other places, or you know this this the same kind of characteristics and and so like we're, there's this kind of mismatch now between sort of our charter and scope and really what people want to do with this and so that's why i'm really trying to get, wrap my head around where would where's the right place to land well, how do we, request where we, yeah. where we engage with this right like yeah, i think the idea i think it's a it's a scope issue and I think that our charter is sufficiently broad at the moment that it that it can <laughs> encompass all of these areas that we've talked about. Um, we're just kind of looking to ensure that we're doing what the community, you know, wants and needs, right? Right. And, and the way and the way that that's typically handled though is by having use cases and um, you know other case studies. To ensure that we're we're driving the hardware in in the way that it needs to be driven, essentially, right? To make sure that it's meeting the need, that it's fit for purpose, for what it, and whatever that is, right? So, I mean, I think that our our charter, which includes the scope, is something that you know we should look at, and it, it always needs to be updated. But we should we should make sure that we our uh, our charter is broad enough to cover these other areas. Right? Yeah. And of course, you know, all of this information is on the, the Telco uh, project page and on the wiki, there's links to the to the charter and stuff so that everyone can 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 read that and comment, obviously. And we'd be happy to have discussions about that. You know, among the community of how to make sure that our uh, our scope is sufficiently broad and that our charter covers uh, enough area so that we can cover the edge. And if it becomes something that's larger than Telco, then I think we can you know talk to the foundation about moving you know creating an edge project. I'm not sure that Open Edge as a chassis is you know, independent of telco itself, but maybe perhaps it would be. But I think, you know, I know John Paul has another, um, you know, the his his uh, presentation is about an alternative uh, form factor. So, you know, and that's, that's all it, totally within our charter to discuss those kinds of things as well. I mean, like, like, would you know? Would his the question would be like? Would, would his contribution proposal have a different profile, perhaps, for this red? No. You know, that would, oh that no, would I don't think so. No, no, no. His yeah. his server would have to meet the the Redfish profile that's been defined for servers in OCP. Okay. There wouldn't be a different profile for his. He would he would actually, you know, his his BIOS. And his Redfish implementation the, of the BMC software, typically, right, um, would need to have those interfaces available so that the hardware management group's uh, approach works on that hardware. Yeah. Right? It, it's not the other way around. You, you know, the, the Redfish profile is something that's kind of a requirement of hardware, not that Hardware imposes a a profile upwards, if you will. Yeah. If that if that makes sense. 
so so kind of going back to my question is is this something you know, is this liaison that that needs to happen between the Starling X community and OCP would that be through us or would that be through the management group like you talked about you know, you know, or no you know, it seems how... like it would be it seems to me I mean that that talking about Starling X in this uh environment in this in this community would make sense because we're talking as far as i can understand the the users of that community the starling x community is service providers okay you know what i mean so it's like yeah, yeah. we want we want to we welcome the service providers into our community and like you know over the years the all of the folks that um, was mentioned, Verizon, Vodafone, you know, they, those have all been members of Telco Project over the years. They're just not active at the moment, right? I mean, Verizon and South Korea Telcom actually had the co-chair positions of Telco Group, you know, several years ago. Right. Yeah, I'm just, so, I'm just, th I'm just thinking that, that, that you know, Starling X would get kind of buried under Telco. Where really we could do, we could do better by them by getting them plugged in at a larger scope in OCP. Is I guess my thought. Yeah, yeah, it def definitely would you know, fit for us. The question would be is you know would it be better for them to get them plugged in somewhere else in OCP and help them broaden their scope. Well, I mean, I'm I'm not. Or, or one step at a time and start here. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't. I don't that would be my vote. The, the Linux Foundation, for instance, in general, has had many. You know, uh, they they've had lots of interaction with different areas. You know, the storage group, some of the server areas, kind of depending on on you know. Uh, because the at, the at the like I said, at the end of the day, the OCP is about hardware, and we want to make sure that the the software infrastructures work on the hardware. So, I mean, I don't I, I don't know what to I don't know what to tell you. We can't work on Starling X here, but we could certainly ensure that our hardware was fit for purpose for Starling X to. Yes, the idea of the collaboration is to figure out how to make sure that both the hardware and the software are happy and they are they are integrated well together to work together. So that's the that's the whole purpose of uh, helping Starling X understand the uh, like the activities in this group, for instance, and um, and how Starling X can support uh, OCP hardware. Um, if there's anything that that the starting X community needs to do, for instance, so uh, that's the whole purpose of trying to work closer together to figure these things out, um, at least in in my perspective. So it, that that's why it would be great to just help the starting X community to to have a better understanding of of OCP um, and more directly from people who are actually working within OCP than me being the uh, the middle person um that would be the um the idea and i think that if we have a if we have a use case here which i believe andy does um to uh, to also use as as context in terms of how the two can be used together i think that would be a good starting point and based on what i heard today on this call it doesn't seem like starting the activities here would mean that that starting X uh, necessarily gets buried. I think it's it could be the other way around, saying that hey, we're working on a profile here, and and that can be broadened uh, for other areas as well, depending on you know additional use cases and and all that. But at least if if um, we can start the work here, then it then we can lay down the mechanics of working on Redfish profiles. And then later on, if there's anything else that fits into the scope of the collaboration, then we can add that too. Does that make sense? Uh, 
I think for like, from my point of view, one step at a time makes more sense than anything else. Um, I think it might have been before you started joining these calls, there was a presentation from somebody who was doing hardware for AWS for retail outlets. Oh, no, for Amazon, for retail outlets, where it was effectively a very overgrown switch with some application capabilities. And sorry for the simplification, everybody, um, but Starling X, Far Edge would be an almost perfect fit for it. But all those boxes can be deployed to wherever. You've still got to manage them. So you've got to have that management layer. And this is where things seem to, to me to fit together. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah one, and, one step at a time. Andy, I believe that um, that effort got ended up in the uh, campus. Uh, uh, it used to be the campus wireless group, but I, I forget what the what the sub project is. Where, whatever it is that. now. Yeah. Yeah, but there, yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, and, the, and actually Amazon did just put out a uh, specification for that server and switch thing. It was, it was Celestica working on it, was, wasn't it, yes. I think, if I remember? Yep. Well, yeah. they, yep, they were one of the ODMs that had, had produced a piece of equipment that has a OCP specification, right? So, John, I will, how about I think this? This John, needs to be an ongoing conversation, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So, John, maybe over the um, over the course of the, we'll get together and like uh, look at the Redfish profile that's that's used for our server, and, and you know, and it's basically a checkbox, right? So, when uh, as Lucas can tell you, when you have a server and you're writing a, a specification for a server sled. There's a checkbox that says, yes, I conform to the Redfish profile, right? So this is something that's yeah. described that we can look at and, you know, and point back to the, to the document that describes that. Okay. And then, so like, like we, like, what Adilco would like us to do is have somebody present to their team this material, if I understand correctly. I think it would be a good next step just so that both sides has a basic understanding of what the other one is doing. Okay. And Andy was saying that that he can also help providing that kind of glue use case because he he's also been um, present at the starting X community too. So they do have uh, some knowledge about Andy's use case already. So that that could be a good one to um, to use for context, further context as well. So pro probably what we would need is some like overview of just OCP in general, and then. We're this very specific arm over here, and then this is where we're starting. Maybe that's the context. Yeah, that can work. Okay. Maybe get someone like Steve Helby to do a five minute. This is OCP. Yeah. Okay. I'm happy to follow yeah, up on this in, in email, and then we can we can figure it out, figure out the logistics. Yeah, and maybe uh, Bijan might be a person as well that would probably be interested in uh, speaking about the OCP as well. Yeah, I, I would I would sign him up for that, especially since he's not on the call today. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Do you all want me to send an email to the uh, the OCP Edge mailing list and then take it from there? I mean, just with the idea of you all doing a an OCP overview, OCP OCP Edge overview there, and then just have that as a starting point. Or yeah, that's that sounds like a good idea, right? Because then then we can kind of show that around, and then you can kind of formalize your ask, mm -hmm. and then you know we can kind of farm it around inside. OCP here and and kind of get our ducks in a row and figure out kind of the best way to approach it. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, yeah. I'll I'll do that. 
Thank you. Does that sound good for everybody? Oops. Sounds good. Me. Sounds good. All right. Well, I see we've we've gone over our time here. So I um, appreciate everybody's time, and uh, we'll talk next month. And uh, Adilka, we'll look for your you're gonna you're gonna post that to the to the mailing list, and then I can t kind of take that. We can kind of take that run with it, and um, you know, hash this out on the on the mailing list and and get a plan in place. Sounds great. Thank you all. That was a great discussion. Okay. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Have a good, good night or, or afternoon. Bye. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye.